Okay. Well, I think we're I think the robots have done their job, Jay, and I think we're mm. I think we're live. All right. So welcome to Contractors Corner. My name is Adrian Park. And um with me today. Some say that his intelligence has been censored in 17 states and two Canadian provinces, and that his favorite vacation spot is Area 51. <laughs> Despite his best efforts, wherever you are in the world, if you tune your radio to 88, you can hear his thoughts, but only if you know Morse code. He's the founder of Contractor <laughs> AI and Jay Carter Roofing, the master and commander of Pay Per Click, John J. Carter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every week they get better and better. <laughs> oh, it's fun. So, I mean, we've got to have some fun, right? Mm -hmm. Life's too short not to. So, all right, we're going to get right into this today, Jay. So, um, you know, we were just talking before we hit the little red button, and it's, I think that, you know, we're, we're talking about selling in these last few shows, and I think we make one of, or actually, we make two mistakes um, when we're selling. Um, the first mistake is that we forget that even when our customers are other contractors like a general or they're in the industry they're architects or engineers or whatever i think we forget that like you know burying people in jargon like that doesn't work and it just you you, you know people glaze over again even if they're in the industry with us the other mistake i think we make on the other so that's one extreme over here on the other extreme I think the other mistake we make is that we, you know, so we think, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to sell and I want to increase my sales, you know, and get more contracts. And what we do is we, um, we tell, you know, we talk, we tell stories and mm -hmm. we talk about all these Overpitch. things that we've done. And it kind of turns into like the intention. Okay. In defense of all of us. And I've done this. So I'm guilty of this myself. The intention is, you know, we're proud of the work we've done. And, you know, and I did this the wrong way. And then I think I did it the right way. Cause these, the results kind of pointed to that. But, you know, we, we talk about all the stuff we've done and it ends up being this like chest thumping session and they get the same result. The customers glaze over whether they're, you know, a, a civilian that doesn't know contracting or like a, a, a person in the industry, a GC or, or whatever, you know, somebody that knows, knows the lingo, um, and, and, or knows, you know, knows about those things. And I think there's like a middle, you know, there's a middle where, you know, I'll give you an example where we can talk about some of the things we've done, you know, be you know, implement storytelling, which I don't even know if that's the right word, but not brag and actually connect with our customers. And, so I shared a couple shows ago about, um, I came up with this thing that, uh, this, I guess a tag or, a something that we put on hoodies and stuff and hats, uh, cause we did historical restoration and, uh, specifically Mason restoration. And so I had this idea, I was like, oh, restoring history. And, you know, I thought, oh, that sounds pretty good. And I put it on and that was like, I mean, our, my team loved it. Everybody front office you know, shop, cruise, everybody loved it. They were the most popular things that we, we, you know, most popular hoodies and hats and so on, but customers also loved it too. And I was like, oh, okay, we're on to something here. And so, you know, I, what I would do is when I was like selling a contract, I would just share some of the stuff that we were doing, you know, in downtown Erie or, you know, this, this big, this cool project in Pittsburgh, wherever I was, you know, wherever I was selling the work. And not to brag, but one to share like a similar project that was, was similar to the project I was trying to sell. And, you know, when, when I did it well, uh, which wasn't all the time, but when I did it well, what I found was it helped, you know, because then when I was like telling about maybe like 
a little snippet about something that happened on that job or whatever. And, you know, telling a story about that job, for example, um, what I found is that those customers, the person I was talking to, they kind of like took on, like they kind of thought about, they, they thought about their job and then, you know, so it ended up serving as like a kind of an emotional connection, but also, you know, also kind of served as like what we call social proof, you know, in our business and that increases authority. Right. So that feels to me like a happy medium between the jargonese over here and burying people and, you know, chest thumping about all this, these cool projects we've done and we're so great, blah, 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 blah. So how can we help our fellow contractors, you know, connect more? Cause the point is to connect more, you know, connect more with their customers or tar ideal customers, target customers with, and stay out of the weeds over here with the jargonese and stay out of like the chest thumping. Okay. So I'm going to give my two cents on this. Um, right. I have a lot of experience training sales reps and running sales calls. So here's my, here's my first rule of thumb. Um, yeah. If you don't have a set clear sales process and you're not, you're not closing um, consistently. All right. It's time to get some training. Nothing I'm going to say to you here should be put into practice because I feel storytelling is an advanced <laughs> tactic and a strategy um, that we could use. So, please you know a, get a hold of a us warning warning right. label <laughs> well because things get taken out of context and guys go and use specific things when right. really the, you know they don't even have a process they don't have a right. set way and one of the biggest problems in contracting overall is sales um yeah. is conversions is you know again it's is why some companies can massively grow and others don't it, it all comes down to again their skills when it comes to sales okay so if we're going to use storytelling, all right, we have to be very, very aware of why we're having the story and what the purpose and outcome should be. All right. We got to identify what the core message is. What does it relate to? Okay. Yeah. And I highly recommend if you're going to tell a story, you, you test the story. I know too many sales reps that get into the weeds, start telling a story, lose their chain of thought, and it turns right. the client backwards. It confuses them. Right. It adds right. more yeah. fat to a, to maybe an already you know, unorganized, unstructured sales call. Okay. Right. So structure for me is really important. Um, and it has to have an, an ultimate, you know, emotional um, tag I'm looking to, to nail on them. Right. So again, right. I like, you know, in some of my stories, I'll use um, fear or regret, right? Like what if you made yeah, a bad decision? Can I tell you a story yeah. about a time someone made really a bad decision? Point. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, I had one for years that I used where I would explain the story of, you know, the male picking the color of the shingle on a Friday night with me. And then we put the roof on on Monday and on Tuesday we redid it when the wife found out. Right. So, I mean, we would use going. <laughs> a lot of times to, to give a warning or to give a recommendation and to get yeah. things persuaded the way I'd want. That's a great, lot of yeah. times I use storytelling when I'm objection handling. Right. So, again, there was appropriate stories that I have that I'm ready to, you know, share when I'm in an objection handle to bring down the sales resistance. Okay. So already you're in an uncomfortable position. If I need to reset the prospect, I'm going to share a story with them where, you know, a situation just like this, you know, and this right. was the outcome, right? Where, where are we leaning towards here? Right. So I feel like storytelling is a powerful tool. It can incorporate some testimonials, real life examples, things that they can relate to. But you have to be overly cautious when telling a story, okay? And the reason why is because even the, the tonality of saying and, and having the story in your thing can throw people off. And a lot of times um, what salespeople don't realize, and again, advanced tactics here, tonality, body language, all of these things, all of these things are signals, okay? So if yeah. we're still at the, at the stage of going in and pitching, to our clients, you know, where we're putting a presentation together and just blasting through and, and pitching at them. Right. You've got bigger problems. Don't worry about right. storytelling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I would suggest you immediately get into some sales training where you learn how to pull out the concerns of your client, pull out the pain, find the problems, find the, you know, suggest the solutions, move them through uh, steps and, and getting a prospect to close. Right. Um, and it's a skill. Don't underestimate. It's one of the most powerful skills that you can have in the world. All right. And it'll, yeah. it'll, it'll go with you into everything that you do. Um, 
and and again coming coming back to the storytelling uh, process, I feel like a lot of times if you're really technical and you've been selling on the technical jargon, which I would say ninety percent of our clients that we encounter yeah. do, they're coming from the tools. They want to explain. They're proud of what they do. Right. But they don't understand, like the, the customer doesn't understand what the hell they're talking about. Right. And and by doing that, I mean, it doesn't build any more authority. And what it does is it starts to create sales resistance, right? right? Because now you're putting yeah. more logical stuff into right. their brain, okay? Right. People do not make decisions in a logical side of the brain. It's on the left side of your brain, right? Um, in order to um, make somebody or move somebody um, to actually buy from you, all right? They have to be in an emotional state. That's the right side of our brain, right? right. So we want to, we want to, as much as possible, stage our sales calls so that the logical conversations occur at the very beginning, getting them right. out of the way so that then we can move them to emotionally buy from us. Because here's how right. buying works is, is, you know, again, in, in my opinion, other people have other opinions, but people buy with their emotions, justify with logic. Okay. So, when they buy with their emotions, they have to trust you. Like there's a couple of key things that need to go in. And this is, it doesn't matter if you're, it's a B2B sale. It does. If you're in front of someone and you have an opportunity to get them to close on a, on a sale or close on your company, we have to be wildly aware of where and when we turn on the emotional tie. Okay. The emotional yeah. tie downs should be, you know, towards the end in your closing and your objection handles. And again, storytelling super powerful because it get, it pulls yeah. people in. But yeah. it's really the the way I like to use it is it's it it's going to allow them to retain the information that you're sharing, and it should be the top part of your of your presentation, in my opinion. Now you can use a little bit of storytelling at the beginning to kind of build rapport. I, I've done that lots of times, and just you know, if we're talking about family and stuff like yeah, that, but for sure, you, you know, there's a time and place for it. Um, the other thing that I've seen um, and that I've had a problem with my own sales reps is over storytelling. Yes. Okay. Where right. we can go the opposite direction yeah, now the other, and, that's right. and we're, and we're sharing stories, you know, to kind of, you know, create rapport. And I've, I've had these conversations lots of times and creating more rapport doesn't help you to close sales. People might like you, they right. might trust you, but they're still right. not closing because we haven't, we haven't spoke to them about their specific problem and how right. we're going to solve it, solve it specifically. We haven't got them to that point where they're ready to say yes. Right. So right. again, it, really what it comes down to, if you want to use storytelling, you know, have a structured story, have it a, a beginning, a middle and an end. Right. <laughs> Can't tell you how important that is um, because people will be sitting there going like, what the hell did that guy just like, what was that? Don't, you know, really think about the purpose of it what the core message is going to be and what the outcome, what's the emotions they should feel. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I feel like if people stuck to those kind of rules and logic behind telling stories, um, even if you're very technical, all right, take what you want to say in the technical base, spin it to a story, right? Explain what you're saying. So if you're going to say right. something technical, like I'm using, you know, these HDI big ass screws, whatever, you can turn that around and be like, hey, you know, we use this because we've had this problem before in the past. This yeah. is our client. This is what he experienced. Like you're explaining it through a story, which people will yeah. relate more to than just coming out and saying, you know, we're using X, Y, and Z, right? Yeah, I think if I can weigh in on that too, Jay. So one of the, I'll give an example of how I use that a lot, um, you know, because as much as we would like, you know, in Mason restoration and repair, as much as we wanted every customer to repoint their entire building, um, that's not how it goes. And, and, a lot, and sometimes some of the time it's not necessary. Of course I would, I would never, you know, oversell work like that. That's, that's bad business, but you know, there were more than, you know, I don't know, 30% of the time folks would hire us to do, say like half of the building or whatever. And, and, um, and what ended up happening is you have to match mortars, which, you know, um, seems you think, oh, that's, that's not that hard because you've got colored mortar these days. And, you know, you think, oh, that that's easy. It is not easy. <laughs> In fact, it's one of the, it's one of the things I think that frankly, in the space guys fail at the most, mostly from lack of effort. I think my opinion, uh, I could be wrong. And 
And so it really was, I mean, it was obviously always important, but it was really important in historical jobs. So I had to get really good at that. And so we got really good at it. And I was able to tell, so I'd be talking to, you know, a, a owner, customer, whatever, you know, whoever was, whoever the person that was hiring us. And I would just tell them a story about how we, you know, usually on, in the same city, you know, on X building, we had the same problem, you know, where we were trying to match and match something that was installed in, you know, 1918 to, you know, and that's difficult because one, they don't use the same type of sand, you know, so it's completely different. The, 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 everything's different, the sand, the mortar. And, and just, I would explain to them without getting detailed, I would say, you know, so we take, you know, we have, we use some different materials today. However, here's how, you know, here's basically how we do this to match. And, you know, and I would say, Hey, you know, when you're going down sixth or state or whatever street it was on, you know, just take a look at it and you'll see, you'll see that you can't tell the difference. And that was an extremely effective way. Cause that was a huge that was a huge objection or fear of those particular customers because it was so important. Um, particularly like there's, there's obviously like historical regs and things that you have to meet, but just from an aesthetic standpoint and it was, you know, it was very effective. I again, closed roughly just under $3 million a year in historical restoration for four years or three years, and four years, whatever. And you know, it, and it also like, so it was like a marriage of what we're talking about. Like there was some, there was that technical part where it was like, okay, we, we understand. So I got the authority, right. And it was social proof and that person, like there was, they're thinking about their building and, you know, over and over again, I was able to get through that objection because I just would tell, I would share about X building or Y building or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, let me give you guys a, a really easy framework to think about um, when when crafting a story or, you know, trying to tie it into something. I always think of hook story author. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, again, what am I you know, what's the hook here? Like why what would compel them to stop and like what would get their attention in the story? So like I shared with you, you know, can I can I share with you a story about how I you know replaced the same roof in the last in two days? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or how, you know, a husband had to pay for the roof twice. Okay. I'll always sometimes <laughs> use it like, Hey, you know what? That's a good hook. The second, yeah. one, the second one's a really well, good one hook. of the best ones that I use is, you know, Hey, listen, what if I told you that you're going to buy the metal roof, whether you get it or not. Right. Right. Let me explain. Right. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll lead into my story. So, so that's you the know, hook part of the hook story. That's, offer. that's the hook part. Right. Yeah. So again, what's the, and now I have the story well-crafted and, and again, right. I'm, I'm able to logically bring them through, but the hook gets their attention. It, it puts, it puts a stop to what we were discussing before. And now it's pulling them in. It's explaining something to them um, that, you know, as long as you have a relatable character, right in your story that's going to make a lot of sense to them so you want to think right. of mirroring your customer for example like you know i want to tell you about a customer you know recently that you know, we had to work with again um about 10 years ago they came to us they wanted a metal roof they opted to go with a shingle roof so 10 years you know later they found out that the, the roof was failing and it needed to be replaced before right. they could before they um you know could get their uh, mortgage renewed okay so they were really upset. They came to me, asked what they could do. I explained, there's not much you can do. They're only going to give you back a percentage of the material cost, right? I have a customer in a very similar situation, blah, 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 down the street. Here's what right. he opted to do, right? And, and I use that story a lot to like r bring it home to them, like understand the investment side, right? So bringing them through that storytelling part, they can relate to. Right. They don't want to like, again, if you're the if you're hearing this story for the first time and you had no idea that shingles only lasted that, that's one thing to say, hey, you know, right. you've got no warranty with shingles. Well, that's a statement. Right. right? That's your opinion. Now, right. when you switch it to a story about someone similar that looks just like your customer and how they made the bad decision. All right. And now you're you're bringing it forward. They're relating to that person. They're like, you know, and they make the decision in their mind. You're not telling them you're you're guiding them with a story right? right so do they want to be you know bob from 10 years ago that now you know bought the metal roof from me now 10 years later you know and basically has paid double for the for the roof at this point 
And, right. you know, he should have made that decision 10 years ago, right? And then he would right. have still been happy with his roof and he wouldn't have had to pay. So if he had put two shingle roofs on, I mean, you would have paid more than what the metal roof was worth today, right? Yeah. People can generally understand that um, in the most part. And again, that gives us gives me a lot more authority because it doesn't feel like I'm being salesy. It doesn't feel like I'm telling no. them what to do. It doesn't feel no. like I'm demanding what, what I'm going right. to do, right? Right. Um, and it allows us to have a conversation versus me pitching at them. Okay. Right. Here's something you guys always got to keep in your mind with any sales. Okay. The second you start speaking at your client. All right. So this is where we get into the pitching. This is like ditch the pitch, get rid of it. It doesn't work. Ditch it's not pitch. effective anymore, man. <laughs> well, and, and here's two reasons why, right? So number one, um, pitches are a very low level way to sell. Okay. Right. We're not, we're not at the grocery mart, you know, comparing samples of food, right? Like that right. pitch, that pitch days, I think in large part in in-home sales um, has really, you know, people have been sold to, they don't like being sold to. Um, right. They know what a salesperson is. They know what salespeople do uh, for the large part. No one trusts anybody. We're in the post-trust era, right? So when you come in and you're pitching at someone, you're talking at somebody, Okay, rather than talking with them, talking about their problems. Remember, people don't care about you, your company, your brand. Nobody. What do they care about? They care about they themselves. Their, yeah, they want their their problem solved. Yeah. They want to know that yeah. who they're dealing with cares about solving their problem. Everything right. else, cancel it. Get rid of it. It's not necessary. Don't add it. Don't don't bring it. And you're guiding your customer. Remember, all sales is is change. Right. People generally explain like that. to talk. Yeah, explain, yeah. explain what you mean by that. So, so most people don't understand, no matter what, okay, every human being on planet Earth um, goes through change the same way. It's primal. It's meant to protect us, okay? Right. So w when we, we talk about change with people, something triggers in our brains. Think about every time you've bought. Like, what is the fear or concern that's holding you back from just doing it with, like, you know, no issues? It's the fear of change, Right. Um, yeah. fear of, you know, and again, that's all sales Which is, is hardwired into our body. It's absolutely. hardwired. It's, it's system, a protective yeah. mechanism yeah. and the smarter people are, the harder they have to manage with change. Right. right. So again, um, you know, when we talk to and, and how they experience it, how they feel about it, how that, you know, so when we think about how we should be structuring our sales conversations, it should be more around them managing the change, how we help them get through this process as easily and painlessly as possible. Just think about it. Why don't people go to the gym if they're overweight? Just, <laughs> they know they need to, right. but they right. don't, right. okay? Again, it's fear of change. It's, it's because the change is painful, okay? Right. There's pain involved. The same thing as if you're doing a renovation that the exact same pain exists. And now we wonder why people don't want to go to the gym. Well, you've got the same situation with homeowners. You've got the right. same. So keep that as the, you know, the, the outcome that you're trying to resolve with them is you're trying to get them over the process of change. Right. All right. And when I'm, you know, when I'm in my sales conversation, I'm not trying to pitch, you know, the type of equipment that I use on the gym floor. I'm not pitching the benefits and features. Now that's right. a part of, you know, when we get them to a certain state where we have to add that, you know, those pieces right. in. Right. But at the at the very first thing, I'm I'm helping them to discover the solution to their problem so that they can make a change. Simple, right? If you're not thinking that way, what ends up happening is we start to um, we start to try and push the sale. So we start to try and push our logic, our ideas, our beliefs. And, you know, what, what the homeowner feels is that you don't care. You're not listening to them, right? right. You're not, they don't feel heard right. and they're not buying anything from you. Even if they right. trusted you and all that kind of stuff, it, it doesn't matter. And again, when you get into, if you're selling a product or a high, you know, high take a product every single day, all right, these are huge, huge, like the difference between a good sales rep and an amazing closer is night and day, all right? And the only difference that I've found between a, like a true closer and yeah. a, a good salesperson, all right, is their ability to handle objections, but right. also their ability to lead their customer through the change, right? right? Even the idea of getting them to imagine, you know, the, we establish where their current state is, right? We talk about, you know, how they um, need to, 
you know, move through it. They become problem solution aware, consequence right. aware. Right? right. And then and then we're moving to a transition where we're, we're actually, you know, explaining how we solve the problem and then, you know, asking for the business. Right. Again, there's lots of different, you know, ways that we're we're trying to get them through. But think about it. How do people decide they're going to change? Right. Well, they have to be problem aware, <laughs> solution right. aware, right? right? They have to be, you know, more importantly, they have to make the decision themselves. So right. the idea of going in and telling somebody, you know, you should go with me because of X, Y, and Z. All right. That's sales. Yeah, I'm the best. Right. Yeah. You know, you got to trust me because of this. And, you know, if you don't go with that, that's old school pitching. I'm the okay? biggest. Right. Yeah. And, and again, for, for most people, you're going to find that, you know, even with the millennials down, they're highly sensitive to this kind of pressure. Okay. Yeah. And baby boomers just laugh in your face. Like a smart baby boomer right. is not falling for that. They've been sold too many times. Like right. you go in and you just know like, Hey, I better talk straight with this guy. Right. Because he's already, he's already given me indicators that, you know, I'm not being sold. Right. Like they want to be, they want to be heard. They want to make sure that you're competent and that you understand their problem. And right. again, if you're not asking the right questions, that bring that out to them or bring out the, you know, the real reason or cause of behind why they want to solve this problem in the first place. All right. And getting them to, you know, creating the urgency and everything in your sales process. I mean, you're going to fail more often than you're going to win. And again, right. in sales, it's, it's tough, right? Being a 25% closer and being a 35% closer a night and day. Substantial. Right. Yeah. So well, again, I think, yeah, I was going to say real quick. Um, I think that, that's, you know, that's the end game. And that's the, that's, if you're looking for a, you know, if you're searching, you're listening to this right now or watching us and, you know, and you're thinking, well, yeah, like, so who cares if I connect emotionally? And that's, by the way, that's not a, that thought is not wrong. If you're order taking, it's not a problem. Yeah. What's that? If you're order taking, you can, you don't have to go into those things. You can order take, like they were going to give you the business anyways. And if you're the lowest price, like, all of it comes back to logic, right. right? Right. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people that truly want to start to sell their value and are comfortable with being the highest price, right? right. They're comfortable with, you know, guiding their customer. And we've talked about it over the last few episodes, but getting this process wrong leads to problems in the production, leads to problems yeah. in collection, leads to problems because any misunderstanding at the most, you know, I feel is one of the most important pivotal moments when someone you know, commits to working with you or somebody that, you know, you move them from a no to a yes. All right. There's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. Right. And yeah. again, it, you know, what, what, what I like to do is tie down with stories. Right. So again, when we're tying down, like, Hey, you know, I want to explain to you, you know, a time that we're not always perfect. You know, I've, you know, I've had problems right. on my job sites, you know, we've, right. we've broken some windows before in the past, but one thing we're going to do is we're going to take ownership of that. You know, right. this is how we've solved that problem. Like, again, you can use a lot of, um, you, you can use a lot of stories in different places. And I mean, it, it has place all throughout that, like, you know, explaining the problem, explaining the solution, as right. long as that you have structure to that, that call. All right. Then it's totally a great tactic. If you're not a great storyteller, practice these things. Like, make yeah. sure that you're you're ironing it out. But don't try any of this stuff. <laughs> don't do any of it because it'll just end up being a total mess. The and then they're going to point yeah. their finger back at me and be like, he told me yeah, to do it. No, no, no. Tell stories. No, no, yeah. no, no. Get your structure down first. If you need help on this, if you need assistance in building script and building, you know, a proper presentation, of course, we're here. Um, you know, right. we have a program specifically for it. And, you know, shameless plug there. Um but I would highly recommend go get some help, right? Yeah, I think, you know, the again, what I was circling a minute ago was that, you know, the so even if you're not even don't care about connecting emotionally, because that does, you know, you that you hear that it sounds very gushy mm-hmm. gushy. But the net net is that when we do that, to your point you increase the likelihood that each person is going to do business with you. And what I found is that we went, I went from chasing lists. I mean, you know, we were closing maybe 11%, which I think is pretty close to the industry. And, um, and we cut our leads by I don't know, three quarters, 80%, like a huge number 
and you know the business quintupled you know like 5x over the over a few years and higher quality jobs and all of that and of course that wasn't just stories but that was a big part it was a big part of it and you know it's you know it's so much more fun because when you're you know when you're going at when you're closing 10% or 11% like we were brother you are chasing it i mean that's a i mean that is a grind you know like 1 in 10 that's rough and i don't think we were alone in that jay <laughs> you, know, you know i think there's a lot of guys and ladies that are just going out and just cranking out volumes of leads and there's a you know there's a like taking a little bit more putting a little bit more effort into the sales process and we're talking about doing that through story today i mean it's an easy way to go from like what we did from 10 percent, and i think i was at 38 percent in the last couple of years which is you know substantial substantial increase and again we didn't have to like go out and buy as many leads and all of that so um it's i mean it has a huge it's one of those things that has a you know a huge impact to the bottom line and to just the way the business you know the health of the business right mm -hmm. yeah no i can't agree more you're absolutely right so all right so let's um let's talk about some solutions so we've got a couple of things that people are there's you know a lot of folks are grabbing some of our tools um you know what where can we point folks if they're listening to this going well i'd like to learn a little you know that's something i could use some help with where can we point them Jay. Um, yeah. So, I mean, again, um, they can join our school. So very shortly we will be transitioning into, um, sales as well in school. Um, okay. when we're finished up our marketing, uh, sprints, um, of course we have a, you know, uh, a program here at the contractor AI where we'll come in, set up your whole sales program, um, you know, run your scripts, train your team, you know, hire your reps if needed. Um, great offer. It's a more of a done for you um, approach. So if you're looking to move very quickly with this and you know you need help, um, you know you can hire us to come in, um, set up your your whole system, your whole plays, um, get it up and running, get your your reps to KPI. Um, so that's a you know that's an option. Um, if you're still just learning, you're just kind of feeling it out. Again, free classes in in school. Um, where you're welcome to join and, you know, c catch some uh, tips and stuff. Um, and yeah, that's, that, that would be my recommendation. So just to clarify real quick. So when Jay says school, that's a like online platform that we're using, um, which is S K double O L. Um, so if that's interesting, you know, we've got, you know, at, in the description, caption there are links to that and you know you can check out the community so all this all this you know if you want to if you're curious and you want to book a call or you're curious about what we're talking about or, or it's interesting or you want to learn more um what a lot of contractors doing and almost a thousand now um are they're joining our free but also exclusive important to say that group and which is only for contractors so, um, uh, so they're joining the group and there's free tools there. Um, the training that Jay's referencing that happens there, but you know, you, we, we can point from there, you can get pointed to the training and there's just a lot of other stuff going on. It's a very active community. And so, you know, whether you're at the place where you're like, this is interesting, I'd like to learn more, or you're going, that could actually help me, you know, check out the links in the description. You can join the group or you can just, um, you know, book a call with uh, Jay or one of the team and, um, you know, and we can help you kind of figure out what, how we can help. So anything you want to add to that, Jay? No, I think we've, we've got it pretty, uh, pretty nailed there. So, I mean, again, okay. just reach out for help and we're here to help yeah. you. Yeah. So check out the links in the description and, you know, again, you can, you know, request to join the group. It is a request. It's not automatic. And then, and, or, you know, book a call and either of those ways, we're happy to help. So, uh, thanks for hanging out with us for another one of our contractors corner shows. Uh, we appreciate every viewer, every comment, um, every like, uh, it, it means a great deal. And, um, so thanks for hanging out with us and, uh, we'll see you again next week.